afternoon. My name is Bianca and I'm the nurse who's going to be performing this physical assessment today. Before we go ahead and get started, I just want to verify with you, the patient, that it's okay that you go ahead and do this yes. assessment. And if you can also verify your first and last name and your date of birth for me. Uh, Savannah Maloney and I was born December 5th, 1994. Very good. And where are you right now? My home. And do you know what month it is? Yes, October. And the year? 2019. Very good. So we just assessed the patient's level of consciousness and she is mentally stable and intact with answering all those following questions. We're going to first do our first level of the assessment by inspecting the overall head and neck area of the patient. So I'm going to be assessing the head, looking for any masses or lesions, as well as the neck, any masses or lesions, especially in the thyroid area, no nodules, lesions, redness, anything that I can see from here. I'm next going to move forward with palpation, but before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to perform my hand hygiene. And once my hands are nice and clean, I'm going to be using my fingers to go ahead and palpate some areas and landmarks. The first area I want to look at is the preauricular area, which is in front of the ears, the postauricular, which is in the back of the ears. We're going to do the occipital, which is in the back of the head. We're going to then go ahead and do the superficial cervical, as well as the deep cervical, and then looking at the submandibular and the submantle areas of the face and neck, and I feel no masses or lesions noted. We're going to then move to the supraclavicular, which there's no masses or lesions noted there. And then I'm going to also assess your thyroid, kind of feeling your neck and both sides are symmetrical with no masses or lesions noted. So very good. Everything's looking good so far. We're next going to move forward with the eyes. And so we'll go ahead and if you can put on your glasses for me. Oh wait, actually, if you can hold off on your glasses okay. first, I'm going to use my pen light first to go ahead and assess the reactivity of the pupils as well as seeing how the shape and if they're both equal and reactive to light. So both of your pupils look great, even, and are about three millimeters in diameter. I'm going to then go ahead and use my light, and both are reactive to light. So that's great, you have good perla. We're next going to look at the direct and consensual testing, which will be done by me moving the light over your eye on each side, and then again, and again. And what that was demonstrating is that the first pass over with the light, she would have just one of the eyes that's I'm that I have in my field would constrict. And then when I pass over again the second time, both of the eyes would constrict bilaterally, which you did great with that. We're next going to be ass assessing your accommodation, um, which will be done by me having the light all the way out here and moving and they constrict and follow the light to the center of the face. I'm now also going to be taking a look at your red reflex and checking the back of your eyes. And very good. It's a nice blood vessel in the back there and everything's looking good and normal. So we've completed with the, that portion with the light. We're now going to move forward with the Snellens test. And because you are in your sight, if you can great put on your glasses, I'm going to stand about 20 feet away. And if you can cover one of your eyes for me, and then we'll do the other after we've done the first one. If you can read the line that you can read the best. E-P-T-Z-O. And switch over to the other eye. E-P-T-Z-O. And if you can uncover both and read one more time for me. E-P-T-Z-O. Very good. You have 20-30 vision. We're next going to move forward and take a look at your hearing. So I'm going to grab my two tools here. I'm going to first take a look visually at your ear and just kind of see by pulling up and back and I see beautiful ears, no mass amounts of earwax, no redness, no swelling. Very good and no lesions are noted on both of your ears. Very good. And then I'm going to go ahead with my tuning fork now that I have and, and test two tests here, which will be one, the Webster test and then the Brine's test. The Webster test will be done by me um, hitting the tuning fork so that it vibrates and I will place it over your head and let me know if you can hear the vibration. Yes. Okay. Both ears. Very good. Both ears. Very good. We're next we're going to be doing the Rhine's test, which I will be placing this to test your bone um, vibrations to your actual hearing. 
And I will then again hit the tuning fork. So let me know when you no longer hear it. No. Then take me back. Okay, we'll do the other side. No. Good. Very good. All right. Well, we'll set that down. And then if I can also do the whisper test with you. So if you can plug one of your ears, and I'm, I'm going to come. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Move around. And I'm going to whisper a saying, and I want you to repeat what you hear. Blue. And switch the other ear. Blue. Very good. So her whispering is intact. She's got great hearing. We're next going to move forward with the nose and mouth area of the face. Okay. And if I can have you lift up your... Okay, very good. I'm going to first take a look at your nose. And your nose and your torso look great. Nice good hairs in there. Protect your nose and catch all that good bad stuff and whatnot. <laughs> We're then going to go ahead and if you can open your mouth for me, stick out your tongue. I'm going to use my tongue depressor to hold down the tongue to take a look. And the uvula and tongue is midline. The oral mucosa is pink, moist, and intact, and also your teeth are looking great and intact as well. None missing. We're then going to go ahead, and I'm going to take a look at your... Um, we're going to take a look at your crane, three of your cranial nerves with your vision. If you can take off your glasses for me, so it's just a little bit easier. Um, and we're going to test cranial nerve three, four, and six which the third, the third cranial nerve will be tested by an upward motion and you following my finger upward. The fourth cranial nerve will be assessed by you following my finger downward and then left to right will be the sixth cranial nerve. Very good, and that cranial nerve is intact. We would be testing also the optic cranial nerve, which mm -hmm. is number two. And we're going to be doing that by me having myself over here and you're going to follow the light as it comes towards you and that's very good pupils are restricting and following the light to the center of the face we're then going to be assessing the fourth cranial nerve which we did the fifth cranial nerve would be the trigeminal nerve or trigeminal nerve, which if you can clench down your teeth for me. Very good, and no tenderness noted. Okay, very good. The seventh cranial nerve we will do by you smiling and pushing out your cheeks. Very good, demonstrate it beautifully. The eighth cranial nerve would be the ability to follow directions by listening acoustically, and she's able to do so as she's shown us the entire assessment. Um, the cranial nerves nine and 10 are going to be assessed by her opening her mouth and saying ah and when she does that her uvula and tongue are midline which is a good normal finding we're next going to assess cranial nerves 11 and 12. well first 11 if you can shrug your shoulders for me and move your head left to right and then 12, if you can also hold out your tongue for me and move it left to right. Very good, and both of those are normal findings. So we've tested all of the cranial nerves, and now we're going to be moving forward at the reflexes. So let me go up, oh, before reflexes, we'll do our sensory. So I have some tools here. We're gonna first assess your pain. So if you can hold out your arms for me and close your eyes, and I want you to let me know what you feel. Very good. Okay, very good. And then what do you feel? Some light cotton swab. Okay, so we've tested her pain and her light touch and both are intact and working well. We're next going to be doing the tactile demonstration where she'll be able to distinguish one from two pokes from the bottom of the paper clip. So if you can tell me, what do you feel? One. One. Two. Two. One. Two. All right. One. 
And then what we'll be doing now is assessing your sternogenesis. So if you can hold out your hand for me, I'm going to place a common object, and I want you to tell me what that object is. A uh, paper clip. Very good. And then we'll go ahead to graphenogenesis, or graphesthesia. If you can hold out your hand for me and tell me what number that I make in your hand. Eight. Very good. That's correct. Both are all normal findings, and she's doing a great job so far. We then will go ahead and now take a look at your reflexes. So I have my reflex hammer here. You can go ahead and open your arms mm -hmm. again. So I'm now going to be testing her bicep reflex. So you can hold both your arms out. And we'll now have you hold your arm out and to the side. And we're now going to assess your tricep. And the other one. And you can go ahead, and I'm going to now do the brachial. Very good. And then now we will do the um, patellar, patel, patellar reflex. And her legs should kick out. Very good. We're now going to be testing the Achilles reflex, which is in the back of the ankle here. And both will reflex and work well. And then we're going to, if you can lift up your foot for me. And I'm going to stroke the bottom of your heel, and it should flex up, which is a positive or correct plantar's reflex that she demonstrates. We'll do on the other side as well, just to make sure they are done bilaterally. And very good. We, that will conclude my neurological assessment today. I thank you for participating. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. Thank you.